Welcome back to FT Markets. Just like a football team trying to reverse a losing streak, the Greek government has changed its lineup for the negotiations with the Eurozone partners, sidelining Finance Minister Yanis Varoufakis. But will this be enough for Greece to avoid the default and reach an agreement with its partners? Discussing this with me today is Alberto Gallo, Head of Macro Credit Research at Royal Bank of Scotland. Welcome, Alberto. Hi. So let's have a look at the first chart which you brought with you, and that's the repayment schedule which is, um, Greece is facing at the moment. We've seen they've been able to scramble together payments for pensions, but now there is a lot coming yeah. ahead. There's a lot of maturities ahead in the month of May, and um, they have been trying to get more cash from local authorities, from Social Security. Potentially there's a discussion about a pipeline agreement with Russia, but it won't be uh, quick enough to, um, to, to, um, to pay, pay these, for these to maturities. Settle the, bills, yes. the next key date is the Euro Summit in Brussels on the 11th of May, after which there is a big IMF maturity on the 12th. So we're hoping that uh, with, the new, um, with the new team, the new negotiation team, there could be an agreement uh, by mid-May. Now let's have a look at why Greece is under a lot of pressure and that's uh, what's happening to the banks. This is bank deposits for uh, corporates and uh, they've been coming down quite steeply towards, they've been coming down for a while but I mean if we see yeah. since the Syriza government came into power there's been a, a, another collapse. And we're comparing it with uh, Cyprus, what happened to Cyprus where uh, until the imposition of capital controls really Bank deposits have also come down yeah, and then And then capital controls uh, stopped that decline. I think with Greece, we definitely had an acceleration in the declining growth uh, and also in deposit flight around elections. And with the start of the Syriza government, Greek people also paid less taxes in January, and that was very worrying. Now things have stabilized a little bit, but deposits have still fallen a lot, and Greece relies heavily on ECB emergency liquidity, which means that if by any chance a payment is missed in May, deposit flight could accelerate even further and at some point capital controls may be necessary. It's very important to note that that's not a Grexit. Capital controls just stop the problem from deteriorating. But we've, see, we've seen it with, with and Cyprus. We've seen it with Cyprus. But now let's have a look at why maybe the rest of the Eurozone is not under so much pressure and that's 10-year bond yields. We see Greece uh, going up sharply, coming down yeah. a little bit now yeah, on here. the, but, but still very high. And then Spain, Italy, Ireland happily trading at almost zero. Yes, and that's why people think that there's no contagion, because the ECB is buying uh, a lot of government bonds across Europe. The ECB demand is outstripping supply of bonds on a two to one. So for every one euro of bonds in Europe that is issued, ECB is buying two euros. However, this is just a part of the picture. If you're an investor buying a factory in Portugal, in Italy or Spain, and you don't know whether these countries will be in the euro or not, you're probably not doing a 10 year long investment so Greece still stops, in my view, the real economy investment in the periphery. There is still some contagion. Right, but so where do you think this will end? Will there be an agreement? Our base case is that there is a high chance, uh, more than 50% of a partial agreement with the new negotiating team, with the new reform bill that is being drafted and needs to be approved by, by the parliament. Also, Greek people want the government to agree, to compromise. They don't want a referendum. Do if you think Brexit will be... Bad scenario? Or, I uh, think Brexit won't happen this year and I think uh, there is too much confusion between the chance of a mispayment and a Grexit. We know there is a, there's a grace period of two months during which there could be a referendum if an agreement is not reached by being, might be May. In any case, a Grexit would be a disastrous scenario in my view. Uh, the risk is underestimated by politicians. The, the Grexit scenario would basically transform the Eurozone in a currency peg where countries can move in and out uh, and it won't be an irreversible monetary union anymore. Thank you very much, Alberto, for being with us today. Thank you. So the Greek and the Eurozone team still have all to play for. Let's just hope this does not turn into a game where everyone is a loser.